little while ago, I showed you guys this pump. It's specifically made for square body truck, Chevy or GMC, and this is the easiest way to convert over for fuel injection. Fuel injection, you need high pressure pump. And in the past, I used to have to modify tanks and get special made and all this other kind of stuff. These will go right into your original tank. No fuss, no muss. So I tease you guys, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll show you how to do a fuel injection conversion. That's what we're going to go ahead and do today. I've got Holly Sniper EFI right here. I've got Steve's truck back in, Bo James. So I'll show you how to do the fastest, easiest fuel injection conversion using Brothers Trucks module system. Stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing I like to do is disconnect my battery right here. Now, you, not a lot of power going to that or anything, uh, just the sending unit, but it's always a good idea to disconnect your battery before you do any kind of work like this. We've got the truck jacked up because we're going to need to pull the tank out down here and we need enough room to be able to get it down and out, so make sure that you're all safe when you get this all jacked up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here and I'll give you a couple of helpful handy hints on how to do that, so stick around. Taking your gas tanks out, not a big deal, but um, you got a couple different ways of doing it. You could just loosen these right here. That'll take the straps, and you can take them out, bring the tank down, put a new one in, or swap your pump over here. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. It's pretty old and ugly. It was giving me some delivery problems leaking here and stuff like that. So I'll show you how to do this on a nice new tank. But um, I don't like to do this inside of when it's bolted on because this these are, uh, troublesome to get out of the way. It's, it's tough underneath there. So I just take these bolts off here, bring it on down, put my new tank in, my new straps on, then I can go back on. I'll leave these a little bit loose when I put it in so I can get my bolts all in here in. After that's done, I'll tighten those up. Enough on that. So I just cut the hoses off here in the top because I'm not going to be reusing any of them anyway. On the side right here, where your filler neck holds on, you're going to need to get these hoses off right here, and you're going to want to make sure that you get this filler neck off too. It's got three little screws right on here. If you don't get that all off, when you're trying to take it out, it just kind of makes a mess and makes it more difficult. So take your filler neck off first. Personally, I take the brackets off with the gas tank and then on out. And uh, now I can get rid of this guy, pour out my old gas and save it. And I'll show you how to install the new stuff on the new tank, so stay right tuned. So really all I had to do is pull out the old sending unit and put in our new module. Um, you don't have to replace your gas tank, it's just ours was obviously old and pretty tired and ugly and stuff. So that's the only reason I did this one, but you don't have to do it at home. If you have two tanks, you're going to have to do both tanks though. And when I'm putting this back together, if you're going to be putting yours back together, I'm going to put my stone guard back on. I had to trim it a little bit just to put it on the new tank. And then um, I went ahead and got my guards right here. This just keeps your straps from digging into the metal too much. So if you're going to be swapping everything else, go ahead and get these at the same time. I'm going to get this all on here and then I'll show you how to put the module in. Alright, so just in case you didn't see my other video on this, let me reiterate a few things. Down here we have what's what's known as a hydromat pad, and this is going to make it so we don't have to have a specific sump, uh, a little bath, if you will, that holds onto the gas. When you're turning and everything, your gas is sloshing around. We need a consistent amount of fuel at this pump or it'll dry and burn out. That's why this hydromat is for, it's going to soak up all that gas and have a ready supply for our pump. This also has a regulator on it right here so I don't need an external regulator that's nice because it cleans up the engine bay a lot and saves me the purchase of that and the time to install it already has the sending unit in it too so you're getting two three four birds of one stone of this guy when it comes in the kit it will not have the hydromat sock or, or hydromat here installed to install it you got to make sure that the big hole and the little protrusion is lined up when it goes on, it'll just go on the one time and be all ready. When I'm installing this, I can only install 
up to that point and now my sending unit gets in the way. So all I have to do is unscrew these two screws right here and then I can take this off and slide it on in there. I seem to have misplaced my screwdriver. One second. Okay, so you're just going to take these two screws out and you don't actually have to take them out all the way. They're going to hold onto the sending unit and that's good because if you take them out all the way, you might uh, lose your uh, lock washers that are on there. And another thing you want to watch out for if you were to take the screws out all the way is that you have a ground right here that's attached. So make sure that if you take these out, you don't lose the screws, the lock rings or where the ground goes. Now once that is unattached, now I can take my sending unit, float, and just slide it into the tank, and now I can put my screws back together again. So a few other things I like about this is that I don't have to run an additional return line. This here just has everything go in the tank. So that's going to save me an extra 10 feet of hose, the time to run that, and um, the cost of it all. So this is just a really sweet little deal. It's just so many different things together in one sweet little package that's going to make your life so much easier than all the modifications and things like that that I used to have to do when I was working on square bodies. Now that's all ready to rock and roll. You get this really large ring right here to install. That'll just install right over the top of everything. You can put it on before too. Um, it's just I find it gets in my way sometimes if I do that. So when you're going to be putting this down into the tank, how you know you get it in the right spot or not is you have this protrusion here, you have this protrusion here, and you've got a slot right here and a slot right here. So all we got to do is line up all of those guys Make sure your ring is in there proper. Just got to move it around a little bit. Okay, everybody's looking good. Making sure my ring is pretty. Now I'll take my locking ring and install it. You'll have these protrusions here sticking up. We'll slide that over our electrical connection here and everything. And then you'll notice three, three locking tabs here on the tank. So you got these slots right here, they'll go in where those are, then you'll just start it with your fingers and get it going and then we're just going to keep clocking this over. You'll get a screwdriver that has a blunt end, you don't want it too sharp, you don't want gouging into anything and we're just going to do light hammer taps and we're going to tap on all three of these tabs and work it around gently. So give me a sec. So the nice thing about this system too is that it comes with this nice little pigtail here and you're able to do your wiring and then simply plug this in. So I'll climb up underneath and I'll do all my wiring. I'll have an extended length left over. And then when I slide my tank in there, I'll just plug and play this guy together and we'll be ready to rock. Of course, I'll put a little bit of dielectric grease on there. Now how we're going to wire this up we can see we've got a gray wire. This is going to be our power wire. Now, depending on what fuel injection system you have, it might already have a wire that's designated for your power and already have a fuse and a relay set up in that system. So check with your um, fuel injection instructions on that. If you're doing something um, that it, uh, does not have that, then you're going to want to put in a fuse and a relay in order to operate the pump. The instructions come with it, of course. And uh, so gray is your power. The purple is your sending unit. So all you gotta do is find the sending unit wire that came to the tank originally and go ahead and splice it into this right here. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Now you got two grounds. One ground is for the sending unit and the other ground is for the pump. So we'll need to ground these out appropriately also. Make sure you got a clean spot on your frame and you get a good ground. Grounds are the number one problem when you run into electrical problems. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. Now when I climb underneath there, it's tough to get a camera in there and, and uh, see what's going on and stuff. So I'm going to show you how I do my wiring here before I climb up underneath there. Now what I like to do is use a nice stripper. And I'm going to take off uh, maybe about an inch on both sides. And then I'm going to twist the wires around like that. So here I've already done the same thing. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got some shrink wrap to put on there. We don't want our wires exposed. Got a little bit of soldering wire and we've got a little torch. Now I know some people don't like the torch. Uh, it gets the wires too hot. Some people debate miscellaneous things like that. Um, but I like it and I'm going to use it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the wires on here like this and we're going to cross it like a T right like that. Then I'm going to take this end right here and wrap it around right there. Then I'm going to take this in and I'm going to wrap it around that right there. And I'm going to go ahead and screw it together. And I want to make sure that I don't have any like really sharp barbs sticking up or anything like that. It might make contact with um, any metal and ground out and blow my fuse. And then what we do here is we're just going to heat the wire up a little bit and solder it. So usually I've got a better stand for this, but this is what we got today. Yeah, no, obviously there's, there's no gas in here. So and we give a little tug. It's nice and tight. We're all good to go. We'll get our shrink wrap on here. And don't forget to put your shrink wrap on first. Uh, I got a short wire here, I don't have to worry about it. This is one of the most common things I do is I forget to put the shrink wrap on. I gotta take it all back apart again and put the shrink wrap on. But um, just put the shrink wrap on, we'll heat it up, and we're all good to go. So, I'm going to go ahead and climb up underneath here, get that all set up. I'll be back in just a bit. All right, I've got everything set up underneath my truck right here. We've got our pigtail ready for a gas tank. I put a new fuel line on there. You can't use your old fuel line. Now, I'm actually going to be tying into the existing metal line that's already in there because it's in good shape and it's a 3 8 inside diameter hose so I can use it for that um, but I have to have the specific high pressure hose on there so make sure you just don't try to use your old hose get new hoses and new clamps on there now this right here is going to be my outlet for my fuel pump this right here is just an air vent when you're gasoline starts to drop air is going to take up that vacuum that space so you have to have way for that air to get in there or you can get vacuum lock now this right here is a 77 it had a ton of smog stuff on it back then yours probably doesn't have that but i've got an airline that i can just tie into if you don't have an airline that you can tie into what you do is you just get a little filter and you just put it on there like that. They got smaller filters, it's just the one I grabbed. And uh, so all you gotta do is just put a hose on there, clamp it on, and this just keeps dirt and bugs from getting into your vent hose right here. So like I said, I don't need this one, so I'm good to go on that. Now when I'm gonna, um, I'll slide it up underneath there, and then I'll have to put it on a jack. When you do that, make sure you have a board so you don't have anything dent into the gas tank. I've got these straps right here still a little bit loose because when I put it up in there, I might have to bonk this bracket around a little bit in order to get my holes lined up. After all eight bolts are in there and snugged up, then I can go ahead and tighten up this right here. I've got my filler neck and my new hoses, new hoses on there. And uh, I don't have it tightened up just yet because when I slide it up underneath, I'll need to get it exactly in the right spot. And then I can go ahead and tighten up my hoses. So when you put on your clamps, make sure that you're gonna be able to tighten them up and you've got access to them so take a little bit of time and a little bit of thought on which way these are going and which way the head of your nut is so that you're actually going to be able to tighten this when you get it on there. So next I'll uh, go ahead and slide it underneath. I'll put it on the board. I'll jack it on up. I'll do all that stuff I said and I'll be back in a minute, man. Getting all ready to install my sniper there. I need to pull off the old carburetor. 
got the gas tank in. I even ran my fuel line all the way up just so I'm all ready for that. Now, in this year's trucks, they had a lot of vacuum lines. So get yourself some tape and a uh, marker or something to write down where exactly the vacuum lines are going to, if it's going to your brake booster or what have you. And you may not be using some of these, so um, you, can, you might be blocking off some. Uh, I'm not going to get into the minutia of this because more than likely you don't have this year and you don't have this many vacuum lines. But the moral of the story is mark your vacuum lines so you can get them on the back in the right spot. Another thing you want to do too is make sure nothing falls into the engine. So put a rag on top of the carburetor before you start doing any work and then after you take it out have a couple of rags ready and stuff it into the holes. This way if anything falls out when you pull the rag out hopefully it'll come out too. So just give me a little bit of time for this and I'll see what comes next. All right, so in a plastic bag in our kit, we're gonna get this carburetor base right here, gasket if you will, and that'll sit right down there like that. I'm gonna leave my rags in there to make sure that nothing falls in. I'll take them out at the last minute. And then this here is your carburetor studs. Uh, you may have yours in there. There might be different lengths, but I would take them out and put these in. You're going to want to notice that it is a fine thread on one end and a coarse thread on the other. The coarse thread is going to fit into your manifold and the fine thread will stay on top. Now, sometimes when you're putting these in, um, they'll be tough. There's, uh, you know, dirt, green, grice in there, whatever. So, what you'll want to do is you put a fine thread nut on, you'll put a washer on, then you'll put another nut on. Now I'll actually be able to put a wrench on this and um, screw it down all the way and then I'll be able to take my nut and washer and nut off and be all set up. So give me a few minutes to be set up and we'll put that big beautiful baby on there. All right, so I'm getting ready to stick this on. Now there's a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to think about before you put it on. For instance, you got your vacuum lines on the, um, this of course is your throttle actuator right here. So that is gonna go on the driver's side, the left side. So it's gonna be installing like this. So I'm gonna to need to figure out where do I want to port my gasoline line. Now the nice thing about Brothers, um, fuel pump that I just got through putting in there is that I only need one line. If for whatever reason you like two lines, you're going to have to have two ports that are open for that, but we've just got the one line that the beauty of that. So I'm going to be going to the front right here, and uh, but you've got one port right here. You also have another port right here. So if you want to get stealthy and run it down the back of the motor, different things like that, you got a lot of options in there. Another thing that you want to take a look at is your vacuum lines. So right here, for instance, it's this is already plugged off, but I'm going to want to take this out and put a little nipple on there so I can get the vacuum line for my brake booster set up and um, you've got multiple vacuum lines going on right here that are already set up so you want to consider these vacuum lines or the one in the back consider all those things before you put this on because it's a little bit tough to get to that guy after the fact so I think I'm ready and I'm gonna put this on now uh, right like that so we are on and looking beautiful. I've got my vacuum lines uh, all set up. Now the vacuum line for the um, booster here, it actually bolted into the back. So things like that, you gotta make sure actually bolt it on before you put it on because it's gonna be a lot more difficult after the fact. Now that I'm on, um, I just go ahead and just started installing stuff. You have a bracket that's gonna come with a kit for your throttle and your um, transmission. You've got uh, the fuel lines here all hooked up. We've got a temperature sending unit that's gonna come with the kit. And I went ahead and put it in our block right here. And you know, while you're draining the cooling out and um, you're doing all that kind of stuff, look for peripheral things you can get at the same time. For instance, on this one our gauge cluster sending unit was bad so we're gonna go ahead and replace that at the same time and you know check out your water pump and all that kind of stuff knock all your birds out one time so after I'm gonna get all that stuff set up 
um, I'll just start connecting the wires. And everything has a nice plug and play kind of situation here. And there's no way that you're going to get it wrong because each one of these plugs is a little bit different. So there's no way you can do it wrong. And there's not that many. You've got your sending unit, you've got um, uh, one little wire that's going to go to your distributor here. That's going to keep track of your RPMs, your spark. We've got one wire that's going inside for our display unit right here. I'll show you what I do with that in a second here. You've got a um, pigtail here. This has got a lot of wires on it. I only needed to use the brown wire because that's going to go for our RPMs on our gauge. But you can use these other wires for things like nitrous, uh, triggering your fan. Um, you can use it to uh, elevate your um, RPMs when you turn on your air conditioning. So there's a lot of functions in that. I just didn't need, but maybe you do. So you want to figure all that stuff out before you get into it really. And when you're laying your wires out, go ahead and lay them out and then let it rest for a day. And the next morning come in and take a look at it because you'll generally figure out better ways to route it. I didn't get really crazy on this one. It's just kind of an original look so I didn't go with hiding every, hiding every single wire. A um, Couple of things that you really gotta watch out for though is you got this pink wire right here. Now this pink wire, it is going to go and attach to your fuse panel. And you have to make sure, this is real important here, you have to make sure that you put a test light on wherever you're going to plug that into and you have to hit your ignition key, okay? Because a lot of times what happens is that when you turn it, that final turn, to actually turn over your starter, it won't light up. It, it won't have power going to it. So you have to make sure you have power when the key is on and when you're actually cranking it over. I know that sounds kind of funny, but you have to test for that, otherwise this is not going to work. So I've got all my wires hooked up, my, all my vacuum lines, my fuel line, um, and ev all my sensors are all hooked up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on the ignition. Now when I do, this here is going to light up. I'm going to go to wizard. You get this little pen here that comes with it, makes it a little bit easier. And you just fill this out. It's a step by step. Um, which sniper system do you have? Then it'll go how many cylinders you have. Uh, what is the engine displacement? What uh, are the RPMs that you want when it first starts up? So I'll go ahead and program all that information. I'll generally start my RPMs up a little bit higher, like 900, and then I'll let the engine warm up and stuff, and then I'll dial down my RPMs from there. But um, you can see this is a really nice, simple system. Plug and play, computerized, you get your own display, and on that display, I'll show you in a bit, it's actually going to show you your temperature, your RPMs, and a multitude of information that is going to help you get your truck running really good and make sure that you're watching all of the um, temperature and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to do a couple of little things here. I'll be back in a second, and we'll listen to this roar. We're all ready to fire up. Now I've left the air cleaner off because we want to check for leaks. So what I'm going to do is just turn the ignition on. I'm not going to start the car, just turn the ignition on. That'll trigger the pump. You'll be able to hear it run for about five seconds. And then we'll double check it, all of our gas line connections. Then we'll go ahead and start it and we'll double check for any coolant leaks because we put the sensor on that side and our gauge sen sensor on this side. So we got to double check everything before we hit the road. All right, so I'm going to show you the screen right here, but first I probably got to tell you guys I made a mistake. This one's a bit embarrassing. I ran my fuel lines, and uh, whenever you're running fuel lines, electric lines, etc., you always got to keep them away from moving parts, sharp parts, hot parts, all that kind of stuff. When I routed it, I routed it too close to the harmonic balancer. It rubbed on it, cut it, and sprayed fuel everywhere. So double check all those things. Even I make mistakes. You got to watch out for that stuff at home.
Now let's get to our little uh, handheld thing here. It comes with this nifty little pen right here. You can just use your fingers, but sometimes they get greasy and uh, such. This little pen is kind of nice. Now I'm not going to go into every single little thing that uh, uh, this does, but I want to show you a couple of things. Wizard right here, that's where you go when you start up your engine, your fuel injection, your uh, cubic size, your cylinders, etc. Um, you've got tuning, so now that I've got this running, I can go into tuning and I can um, go into uh, all kinds of things. Um, accelerator enrich, fuel prime, uh, there's just a ton of things, a ton of information online to where you can just get into an absolute incredible amount of dialing in your engine. Um, but I can change my uh, timing, all kinds of different things on this. Uh, you got your monitors here, you got multi-gauge, you got your vitals, and this is going to show uh, if you've connected up your fans or not, if they're turning on or not. It, you got your um, IA, uh, IAC position sensor, your battery volts, you'll have uh, temperature, you got your RPMs right here. So if you want to go back to your screen, all you got to do is just touch that, and then you can go uh, and you can hit any one of these other items right here. So that is how all of that works. I'll go ahead and start it up and let you see what that looks like. One thing I should mention too that you have to make sure that you've got 12 volts. If you do not, it is not going to work correctly. So double check when you're working on everything that your battery's charged back up. Now here we got our RPMs up a little bit too high. I'll go ahead and adjust that in a little bit here and then um, I'm basically all done. So I just want to reiterate one more time that as easy as it is to install this fuel injection system, the fact that the fuel module system that we installed is so easy is really what I want to reiterate here. There's no return fuel line. There's no regulator. There's no setting up two fuel filters. You don't have to worry about the pump being too far away from the tank and burning out prematurely, on and on and on. All you got to do is put this in your tank that originally fits in there and you are done. So it is the number Number one way to do your fuel injection. Uh, I think that I'm going to adjust my uh, idle right here and I'm going to go for a ride. So you make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because uh, next week I'm going to do something cool and you know what's going to happen. If you miss it, you're going to feel bad and you don't want to do that. Uh, so I'll see you guys on the road, all right?